Now let's get started with our introduction to machine learning in PHP course. The very first thing that we need to talk about is the definition of machine learning. What is it? Well, machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence or AI for short that allows computer system to learn and improve their performance on a specific task without explicit programming. There are multiple keywords here that are very important, but the most important part in my opinion is without explicit programming. So what does it mean? What does without explicit programming means? Let's see an example. Let's say we want to find a way to calculate the price of a house that we have based on different parameters. When we want to do it without machine learning, we have to write the code ourselves. So we say, okay, I have a function, calculate price. It would get different arguments like obviously the size of the house, the number of rooms, and so on. And then we say, okay, just as an example, the base price for this area is like a thousand dollar and obviously the price of the house would be the size multiplied by the base price. So if a house is 100 meters, the total price would be $100,000. And also another factor that impacts the price of a house, for example, can be the number of rooms. So the more rooms it has, the more expensive it gets. So we can take that into account. We can say price equals to price multiplied by number of rooms divided by 10. So if it's one, room it would be 1 over 10 it would, if it's 2 room it would be 2 over 10 so the more rooms the value of this part would be more and when we multiply it by the price the price get more and then we can return the price obviously this is a very simple function we have to take into account a lot of parameters like uh, the location of the house the floor and a lot more but this is what explicit programming is. I have to write the code. I have to take into account all the arguments, all the parameters myself. But with machine learning, as we see later, we give the model some basic data from different areas, from different houses, from different locations. And then based on those trained data, our model would predict okay based on this value the price of this house would be this without any explicit programming for that exact model so it's very important that's the part that really changes everything right now if i want to take into account like 10 parameters i have to come here change every value obviously each value is not the same for each location but with machine learning even if i have like a thousand or two thousand different parameters it would take all of them into account and create some function and based on that function it would calculate the price and it's just amazing it's mind-blowing we will see some examples when we get to the coding part now let's talk about different use cases there are so many use cases for machine learning and Honestly, the sky is the limit, but in order to give you some example of the things that we see around us, when we go to Amazon and it says, okay, if you like this product, this product is also recommended to you, then that's machine learning. When you go to IMDb and you search for a movie and it says, okay, there are these movies that are like this movie that you are looking for, then that's machine learning. A lot of banks and financial institutions are using machine learning to detect fraud. For example, if somebody else using my card in another uh, country, my bank is going to detect it automatically because it's another IP. An IP address is just one of the thousand different parameters that have been used to train all those 
machine learning models then we have a lot of smartwatches all of these smartwatches are using machine learning to detect some health problems for example a while back uh, an apple watch started to, uh, to send some alarms to the user and when user went to the doctor doctor said okay based on your oxygen level and your blood pressure you are very close to have a heart attack and because of that machine learning that was used in that apple watch that person's lives was saved this is just amazing and then we have image and speech recognition for example when you talk to your phone like hey siri or hey google virtual assistants understand what we say that's a speech recognition there is some machine learning model that takes our voice and then changes it to text and then gives the text to the assistant so it would recognize the text and it would analyze the text what we are asking for it's just amazing then we have natural language processing or nlp for short and ais and machine learning algorithms like chat gpt and a lot of language analysis and translation specifically is using uh, these models then we have predictive analytics like we want to predict the future of the market the future of pricing of the houses and a lot of other application honestly as i said the sky is the limit as long as you have some data you can train a machine learning model based on those data and get some amazing results there are many different types of machine learning the most common ones are supervised learning and unsupervised learning what is supervised learning well supervised learning is when we train our machine learning model on labeled data when the correct output is provided for each input so we say okay if this house it has two bedrooms and the size is 100 meters the correct price is like two hundred thousand dollars we are labeling each row we are giving out the correct output and then the model is able to make prediction on new data that we have not defined a lot of spam detection and image classification and predictive modelings are based on supervised learning and for unsupervised learning we train our machine learning model on unlabeled data as you have guessed probably the model must identify the pattern and relationships between all of these data without our guidance and giving out the correct output and most common application of unsupervised learning is like data compression and clustering and there are other types of machine learning for example semi-supervised or self-supervised or reinforcement learning if i want to define them in a very short sentences for example for se semi-supervised learning if we train the model on a mixture of labeled and unlabeled data and for self-supervised learning we use a single input to generate both the input and the output for training and for reinforcement learning we train a model based on some trial and error so whenever it goes the right direction it gets some reward and whenever it goes the wrong direction it gets some form of penalties there are many different algorithms that are used in machine learning but here is a list of most common algorithms you don't need to know all of them we are going to build some simple models with some of these algorithms so you get to know them but i brought a list here just so your your eyes and your mind could get used to these names for example linear regression support vector machine or svm for short knn algorithms or pca or neural network decision tree and so on as we said there are many different algorithms and there are different types of machine learning so how on earth am i supposed to know which one works for my model the best so what should we do 
in order to understand that we have to use some evaluation metrics for example there are some accuracy metric precision f1 score or root mean squared error or rmse for short and there are some other metrics that we can use for example we can train our model with different algorithms and then we use this evaluation metrics and see okay svm works for my data better than some simple linear regression so we can decide that with the help of these evaluation metrics and finally when we want to implement machine learning models in php I will talk about this part specifically in details when we get to the coding part but to give you a very quick overview all the process that we do is in just three simple steps the first step is always to load the data and pre-process the data by pre-processing I mean we clean our data we remove the unnecessary data we do feature scaling we will talk about these pre-processing data when we get to coding parts and then when we load the data we clean it up we train our model based on some algorithms that we talked about and then we evaluate them we see okay this one is good i want to use it then we make prediction with the trained models and we use them for our project so enough introduction enough theory let's get to coding and let's take some action let's learn about algorithms let's about the libraries that we are going to use so let's continue with the course